Hello, I am Joanne Weber. In this presentation, I'm going to discuss the different levels of accessibility in the development of educational resources, including digital materials, books, and curriculum design for deaf learners. Many deaf children are not provided quality, consistent exposure to language, neither in a signed language nor a spoken language. As a consequence of this pervasive lack of language exposure, the child does not develop any functional language abilities. Without foundational language skills, the child will forever struggle with reading and writing. As part of universal design, Providing sign language translations for educational purposes does not guarantee accessibility to spoken and written material for a learner who is language deprived. Researchers investigating deaf learners' access to educational materials found that there are three levels of accessibility. Level one accessibility refers to the learning management system or the courseware meaning the type of computers used, whether captions, images, videos, etc. are incorporated into the lesson. The student engages with the material while simply sitting at the computer. So level one deals with the specific learning management system. Level one requires internet stability. Without it, level one access is not possible. Level one incorporates subtitles or captions of audio material. Video audio material is translated into sign language. At this level, the presentation of materials should have a clean design. The visual presentations on the screen should not be too busy with competing visuals that would confuse the student. The navigation functions should be easy to understand and get the student to where they are meant to go. The same is true for the search features. The student should be able to easily find the video, text, or image resources they need for their work. Level 2 accessibility refers to the interactivity between the student and the digital material. Is the lesson designed to have the student interact or respond? To do something on the computer? Examples include responding to questions on a quiz, clicking an icon to start a movie, moving graphics around on the screen to name a few examples. Level two content can include slide presentations, PDF text files, 
videos, virtual lectures, images. Print material should be presented in plain language. These types of features define level two accessibility. Level three accessibility addresses language and communication, which introduces complexity, a number of layers of complexity. When presenting written content, the lesson developer has to consider the literacy and comprehension skills and or challenges of deaf learners. Whatever is presented needs to match the reading skills of the student. We cannot assume the learner can read the written text on the screen. Research has shown that sign language should be the primary language of instruction. Evidence shows that instruction in sign language best meets the needs of deaf learners. Online materials available to other learners are often not designed nor accessible for deaf learners. For deaf learners, access to linguistic and visual input is limited online. Let's look at why that is. Digital materials and other e-learning resources look inclusive on the surface. Consider caption videos or transcripts of audio presented lessons. On the surface, those resources are accessible. Materials that are presented or translated into sign language are restricted to the camera frame. If I point to something outside the camera frame, you don't know what I'm pointing at. If I'm pointing up, you don't know what's in the sky I am pointing at because the sky is outside the frame. If I'm sitting down, you don't know what I'm sitting on, a chair, a couch, a bench. You don't know because it's not in the frame. Nor are others that might be in the environment visible. The point is, that the visual spatial nature of sign language is restricted to the camera frame, limiting what the learner sees. The natural expression of sign languages requires space and movement, which the camera frame also inhibits. Sign languages use of space and movement is integral to communicate concepts and to obtain attention. The two-dimensional rectangular screen dampens the natural dynamics of the language. As the student is acquiring language or vocabulary through electronic teaching materials, there can be misunderstandings. As an example, the movement and palm orientation for the ASL sign glossed as death may be learned incorrectly. Errors could look like this. Where is the instruction and correction needed for their language development?
we must consider how the student is being guided in their signing execution. Are those opportunities provided? Another issue to consider is the description of spaces. If I was to share a narrative about a house with seven rooms, in ASL, I would use three-dimensional space to provide the information about the individual room's positions relative to the others. I can then add other details about the location of the front door, the garden, and even the kitchen. On a two-dimensional screen, this could be confusing. So additional teaching aids, such as images or video, could be added to make the content clearer. Deaf students benefit from immediate feedback. If they are making errors or misunderstanding what's expected, then quick responses or guidance to help them get back on track is far more effective than delayed feedback, which can possibly upend a substantial amount of work they have been doing. Deaf learners benefit from visual reinforcement of new material in the form of images, diagrams, concept maps, any variety of visual representations to describe the concepts and content being learned. Lessons being taught need sign language videos specific to that content area. Many deaf children don't understand interpreters and don't understand the sign language translations of lessons. Often this is due to the student's level of language deprivation. As a result, deaf learners need more time to process the information. Working through captioning or text information for learners not fluent in the language takes more time and support. We need to create more learning environments for bi-directional, interactive communication and learning with deaf and hearing peers. So to summarize, accessible learning for deaf students has three levels. Level one is at the systems level, software, courseware, the flexibility of the digital platform to design lessons, including video, images, text, and other features. Level two is when the learning environment is designed for the students to actively engage and interact with the material. And level three actively supports language development.